like many of you, you probably first heard about Bitcoin around the time that it first appeared on the, the, the kind of doc uh, uh, in 2008 was when Satoshi's first paper came out. And uh, I think like many of you at that point, I was a little concerned that this internet thing that we had built on top of was re-centralizing in a way. I mean, uh, it was never really totally decentralized and we can have an interesting conversation during the Q&A about the word decentralization. Um, but it was certainly a place that felt flatter. Right? It was a place where you could run your own mail server, you could run your own website, you could run a lot of your own software. You didn't have to, but the fact that you could was an incredibly liberating kind of thing. Right? And there was just enough decentralization on the internet that um, it was spawned, it was, a, it was a, a place where a lot of new businesses could be formed. Um, uh, and I don't know if this makes me a good ancestor or not, but I, along with some others here, were complicit in putting the first ad banner on the web. Uh, and <laughs> I, I tell people I've been atoning for it ever since. Um, uh, but, uh, but even in those days, it felt like the internet was this wide open frontier that by 2008, it didn't quite feel so much as like a frontier. It felt a little more like things we're organizing to get back to perhaps what Thomas J. Watson, who was the founder of IBM, said, which was maybe there's only a market for actually five of these computers in the world, right? Uh, it turned out that they would be, uh, you know, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, you know, et cetera. Um, and so at that point, the, the, the launch of Bitcoin kind of felt like, like there were a number of other projects along these lines that were about um, a set of developers going, well, can we just reinvent uh, the underlying protocols to not have this you know, centralizing network effect, right? Is there a way that we can make it cheap again to and, and create a, a financial incentive and a, and a protocol that made it so that you could host things in a decentralized way and didn't have to worry about these centers of gravity forming uh, out there in the world? And, and possibly idealistic, I resonated with it, but I had some issues with it too. I had some issues with uh, the idea of proof of work serving as the fundamental basis for how this works. And I, and, and I can go into it in a bit, but proof of work is basically burning CPU power to run a lottery to figure out who puts the next link in a chain, which for a lot of people, as they start looking at this, makes you go, I'm not so sure I want to get into this. I kind of call it the mercury mining of our generation, right? And that it's cool technically, but also kind of icky once you get into it and certainly can leave a toxic uh, legacy. Um, uh, what I also was concerned about was whether a, a speculative financial instrument really was the right way to build the web 3.0, right? Uh, was there a risk that this would be gamed the way that financial markets have always been gamed, uh, and we would find a whole new set of, of uh, uh, empires being built out of thin air, uh, fairly or unfairly, right? Because the internet never felt that way. Internet technologies and protocols, you'd release a piece of software, the thousandth person to adopt it didn't benefit from it less than the first person to adopt it, right? In fact, they probably benefited more. It was a snowball effect that grew and grew. And so um, I stayed kind of away from, from Bitcoin, much to, again, our family's detriment. I uh, did not <laughs> invest early on in Bitcoin or uh, I, you know, any of the others, but kept my eye on it. And it was when I kind of realized that there was perhaps another take on it, which was to look at the technology underneath uh, cryptocurrencies uh, uh, to try to understand, was there something innovative and, and unique there and a way to detach it from some of these things that felt weird that I decided to jump in.